Let's look at this problem. We have three return lines that contain steam. So steam is just the H2O. All right. And sometimes we use the word steam even though it may be in the two-phase or even liquid state. And that's true for this problem. But we have three well, lines that are bringing in water. And it's in a plant but the, the idea is that it goes into a collection tank. So those three lines come into a tank. They come in maybe from the top, the side, the bottom. Maybe we label this one line one or state one coming in, line two with the state two, line three with properties that we evaluate for the steam coming in. All right. It operates at steady state. We're happy to see that. We don't like problems that are transient. They're very hard to analyze. And it, all of them are at three bars. So we know the pressure at one, pressure at two, pressure at three. It's all three bar. The steam enters inlet one. So more information coming. At a mass flow rate and a quality. And then inlet two, it's described by a mass flow rate and a temperature. And inlet three by a mass flow rate and a temperature and the steam exits the tank at three bar well we'll go ahead and introduce in our illustration it exiting and there's only one stream exiting we'll go ahead and give it the number four for the state that it's exiting the rate of heat transfer from the tank is 50 kilowatts well i would like to stay with the sign convention that our heat transfer into a control volume and the logical control volume here is around the tank all right so this is our control volume and we're going to write the q dot as positive in our energy balance equation as going into the tank and if we had a work or a power the w dot would be positive going out but for this case it's a tank that's zero but here we read this line carefully it's a rate of heat transfer of 50 kilowatts. So we know the magnitude is 50 kilowatts. But as shown, if I put a plus right here, that would be a positive into the tank. But this keyword right there says from the tank. So at that point, I need to put Q dot is negative 50 kilowatts. Again, I'm trying to stay with our sign convention for our energy balance for a control volume, and Q dot would be positive in. All right, so if you really have Q dot as being from, then you put a negative in in front of it. Okay, neglect kinetic potential energy effects determined for the steam exiting. So what is that mass flow rate? So we're asked to find m dot four going out in kilograms per second and the temperature t4 that's what we're asked to find okay what's the general approach the general approach is doing a mass balance and an energy balance the mass balance for a control volume the rate of change of mass in the control volume with respect to time is equal to the sum over all the m dots in, we have a mass flow rate coming in at steam stream one, mass flow rate stream two, mass flow rate stream three, that's like pipe one, pipe two, pipe three. I know it's kind of a tongue twister. Steam is coming in a stream one, but there you go. And it's going out at four. We have at steady state. We know 1, 2, and 3. We only need to solve for 4. So that's straightforward. Let's go ahead and write our energy balance. This is really the first law. What do you mean first law? Conservation of energy statement. The rate of change of energy in the control volume with respect to time is equal to the Q dot coming in minus W dot going out plus, and I'm going to write M dot 1 H1. Now we could have put the potential energy and the kinetic energy 1, but they already said it was negligible. Let's just leave them out of the energy balance equation. Plus M dot 2 enthalpy 2 plus M dot 3 enthalpy 3. Those are all the three inlets minus the only exit M dot 4 H4. So it's steady state, no power, we can see now how to calculate the enthalpy at state four. Well, how does that help us? Well, we're going to use the state principle. 
the state principle that says I'm looking for the temperature at four. I could find the temperature if I was given two pieces of information that describe state four. If they were two independent intensive properties, well, what are the two properties? I'm given the pressure at four, and if I could calculate the enthalpy at four, that's how I do it. So that's the overall strategy of getting the answer for part B. Strategy for the answer part B, mass balance. For part B, I'm sorry, for A, that's mass balance. For part B, you need to do the energy balance and then the state principle. Well, to organize the information, I encourage you to use a table. The table um, is going to be like state, and then I put one, two, three, and four. I have four states. I'm interested in pressure. I like to put bar or kilopascal, temperature, and degree C quality because it's given for at least one of the states. And the key property is enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram. I like to also put a little note to myself as to what's going on and also M dot in kilograms per second. I know this mass flow rate is more for the stream than the state, but it's easy to organize this way. So let's put the information that gets given for state one, 1.3 kilograms per second. The pressure, 300. Well, I'm tired of kilopascal. Let's get rid of that. And let's put bar because the problem was bar. So that would be coming in at three bar. And the quality was uh, 0 0.9. Well, because we know the pressure and the quality, um, it's two phase. And we go to table A3, and you get H of F and H of G, and you could calculate the enthalpy. And let's go ahead and do that, and it would come in at 2508.9 kilojoules per kilogram. How did you do that again? Well, again, the enthalpy at state one would be the enthalpy of saturated liquid at three bar plus the quality at state one times, and I'll just put H of G minus H of F, all at the three bar. So saturated vapor minus saturated liquid enthalpy. All right, and that's the quality right there. That's how you calculate H1. Let's continue to populate this table. At state two, we have a mass flow rate of 2.3 coming in. Again, three bar, everything is actually three bar. We can put those all the way in, down the column there. And then that other piece of information was the temperatures 200 degrees C. What I need to do is see if that's subcooled liquid or superheated vapor. How do I do that? We go ahead and say, what is the saturation temperature, Tsat, at the three bar? And we go to the table A3 or any you get it from also table A4, but you, table A3 is probably the best. And it comes in that that saturation temperature is 133.6 degrees C. We could even write that right here as 133.6 uh, degrees C. And now we compare and we say, well, the temperature at state 2 is greater than the saturation temperature at the pressure of 3 bar. Hence, we conclude this is superheated vapor we would go to table a4 and find a pressure block of three bar look for the line of temperature of 200 degrees c and then read off our enthalpy our enthalpy would be 2865.5 okay let's go to uh, inlet stream three has a mass flow rate given to be 1.6 kilograms per second and a temperature of 95 degrees C. Well, we would do the same thing. You compare that temperature at state three to T sat at that pressure. And you say, oh, it's less because it's lower temperature. 95 is lower than 133.6. We conclude this is subcooled liquid. And now we would want to use table A5, but table A5 isn't that pressure is not high enough, so we use the approximation in table A2. What approximation? Well, if you're interested in the, the for a subcooled liquid, the enthalpy is approximately the enthalpy of the saturated liquid 
at the temperature of the liquid. So the enthalpy at state 3 is the saturated liquid's enthalpy at 95 degrees C. So you go to table A3, find the line of 95 degrees C, and look up 397.96. It's kind of a good problem in the sense you go from table A2, A3, A4, and you even thought about trying to use table A5, but too low of pressure for state 3. Okay. At this point, all of uh, we, uh, mass flow rates are tabulated. You can calculate the M dot for... Uh, from this equation right here, I'm just going to give the result m.4. It comes in at uh, 5.2 kilograms per second. Box it and say that's the answer for part A. Good. All right. Now we have to do the energy balance. And we have the mass flow rate 1, 2, 3. We did 4 already. We have our enthalpy at 3, 2, one, we know that this Q dot is negative 50 kilowatts, and you do the algebra, and I'm going to skip the algebraic step and say you calculate that enthalpy at state 4 from the energy balance equation, and that comes in at a whopping 2007.5 kilojoules per kilogram. Now we think, okay, we just got our value for H4 from the energy balance. We're still at 3 bar. Can I tell what the temperature is? This is, again, the state principle. I would take and compare the H of G with this H of 4. And we find the H of G for 3 bar is a whopping 2725.3 kilojoules per kilogram. So H4 is less. H4 is less than H of G. It's... it's not superheated it's in the two phase region you can also compare and find that h4 is let me do it this way is greater than h of f at three bar it's in the two phase region so over here i'd say oh it's two phase i would uh, note that it's table a3 uh, we could calculate uh, i should have put my number in here i should have done that right it's the enthalpy was 2007.5. We could calculate the quality at state 4, but it's not needed. All we needed was the temperature at state 4, and the answer is sitting right there in front of us. It's 100. It's Tsat at 3 bar, so the temperature at 4 is 133.6 degrees C. And with that, we're done with this problem. Hope that's helpful.